What's up, everyone? This is Steven, a.k.a. Teros, from Bankroll Builders Fantasy Sports at bankrollbuildersfantasy.com. I'm here to bring you your Week 4 recap and your Week 5 picks for the NFL on Prediction Strike. Now, this past week was not as optimal as, as possible. Go figure, that is the way it is with every type of fantasy football out there. This is a weird year. It's almost like COVID year where you don't know what's going on. Nobody else does either. General managers don't know. Head coaches don't know. It's a giant complicated mess. We're all going through it. Looking at this past week, let's do our recap first. I want to try and get these videos a little shorter for you. So I'm not taking up so much of your time. But I still want to give you good content. So... Week four, we had purchased Jamal Williams, Gabe Davis, and Khalil Herbert. We held Amon Ross St. Brown, Tyreek Hill, Antonio Gibson, Curtis Samuel, and if you already had him on your team and had not sold him when we did, Michael Pittman. Looking at our buys, Jamal Williams was a good win. Uh, he gave us, I believe, 10% profit. Gabe Davis, because of his illness, really underperformed. I had more I had more Jamal Williams than I had Gabe Davis, which helped with balancing it out, but Gabe Davis hurt. Uh, and his sickness is kind of what did it for us. Uh, then we had Khalil Herbert with a moderate loss. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown didn't play, so that means he didn't improve or Drop as a loss for your bankroll. Tyreek Hill had a moderate gain. Antonio Gibson and Curtis Samuel both had moderate losses. And Michael Pittman had a small loss. Looking on to this week's set of games, we've got a little bit of a conundrum. A little bit of a challenge. So, I don't know what's different in the algorithms for prediction strike this year versus last year. Um, it seems like something's different, or it may just be how this, this season is going so far. I mean, it's week five. We have four weeks now that we can look at the data and say which defenses are actually performing well, which ones have been performing well just because they were going against weak offenses. We can say the same thing about the offenses, who just had really easy defenses and who had really strong defenses. So we can kind of look through some of that better now than we were able to before. Uh, but these projections are all getting pretty high. There are three big over-under games, uh, and really they're not even that big. Most weeks you have a couple of games that are in the 50s. This, year, this week... You've got the Kansas City and Las Vegas Raiders in Kansas City. That's a 51 point over under. The Philadelphia Eagles and Arizona Cardinals are going to be 48 and a half. And then Baltimore versus Cincinnati, which is actually my favorite to be a shootout, uh, is sitting at a 48 over under. I may actually go put a bet slip in for that to be on the over because I don't think it's going that low. I think this might be a real shootout this week. Problem is, is that if it goes to the to 48 points, most of those players that you could pick up are not going to hit their projections. Prediction strikes projections are so high right now that it's really difficult to pick anyone on those teams Unless you're taking a gamble on Juju Smith-Schuster, Mar uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, or uh, Devonta Smith, or Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, or Isaiah Pacheco. I mean, who knows? He could jump in and be the main guy this week for the Kansas City Chiefs. You just don't really know. You don't have a good sense of what these teams are going to be doing or who can even produce on those teams. And I, 
within reason, of course. I mean, we're starting to see who the stars on each team are going to be. But there are a couple of teams that one week it's this guy, and the next week it's that guy, and the third week it's a completely different guy. I, I It's a little confusing on some of those teams, but we're here to try and dig through some of it and help you figure out who to go with. So for week five, our buys are going to start off with Jalen Hurts. Now, Jalen Hurts, we sold at the end of week three, I believe. Uh, I didn't like his projection this last week, which was up around 24 fantasy points. He didn't perform well, so it came down. It's now 22.83 against the Arizona Cardinals, who give up the passing game and have not been good on the offensive side very well, but have the capability to do so. Uh... 48.5 over under, and Jalen Hurts is a little discounted because of that loss last week. Uh, He's actually been discounted more than our purchase and sell cost um, for having him. So you're actually getting him at a 2% discount from what you had in week three. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up Jalen Hurts. Uh, He should have a good week this week, in my opinion. Uh... On the other side of the ball, we're going to pick up Marquise Brown. He is one of the only skill position players in these top three games that I feel comfortable with. Um, 15.13 points for a projection. Not too bad. He's been producing in the 20s. Um, If Arizona even wants to come close, they have to get the ball to him. Um, Probably going to sell him after this week because... We're going to have DeAndre Hopkins coming back in. We already have Rondale Moore that's coming back in and starting to play. It's starting to get a little bit... You're starting to get all of the starters back in Arizona, which is great. Um, But that also means that for Hollywood Brown, it's going to get a little short. Uh, So Marquise Brown is our second player that we're going to pick up. And then... I should really put this into another category I created, which is the unknowns. Uh, But Bailey Zappi. Right now, Mac Jones has two practices under his belt. Bailey Zappi just played this past week. um, Did actually pretty well. Um, If he had a five-point projection or higher, he probably would have doubled or tripled his value. Um, He didn't look bad. So if he plays and they continue to have this 10-point projection, I'm all in. I will pick him up. I will probably max it out at $500 and watch that grow because I don't know a quarterback who plays a whole game and has less than 10 points. Uh, If that happens, I will be extremely sad, but that's just me. I'm willing to take that risk. Uh, if Mac Jones plays, Bailey Zappi will not be the starter. I will not have Bailey Zappi. So he's a buy, but I'm going to buy on game day once I know the injuries. Looking at our holds, we've got a Monroe St. Brown. Very simple. Uh, it's a decent matchup. He, his team, the Detroit Lions, are currently projected to lose by three points. Um... Jared Goff, by the way, is the number five producing fantasy football quarterback in the league. Um, Yeah, I'm going to take Amon Ra St. Brown, who is the primary receiver for the Detroit Lions and Jared Goff, and ride that to a win. Um, If he doesn't play, then he has a zero projection, and he doesn't hurt us at all. I'm perfectly fine with that. That means that the money just sits there and does nothing. Michael Pittman is going to be the other hold if you continue to have him. Uh, I might purchase him tonight. It's a toss-up right now. Um, 14.58 fantasy points. Uh, The offense really runs through him. Nobody else catches the ball. We saw that over the past couple of weeks. So he's going to get hyper-targeted. And you have a mixed success for uh, star wide receivers against the... um, Denver Broncos. Sometimes they can shut them down, sometimes they can't. What I really noticed was that the the superstar players, the guys who are your fantasy 
wide receiver ones and wide receiver twos, they're going to do well. Uh, Adams, no problem at all. Um, Brandon Cooks had a little bit of a challenge. That's kind of the difference. So looking at this other group that I have, which is what I was saying I would put uh, Bailey Zappi in, um, it's my unknowns. It's players that I'm really waiting until Sunday morning to make a decision on. So who are those? Gabe Davis. He was sick this past week. If he's healthy, Buffalo is projected to win by 14 points. That means one or two touchdowns for Gabe Davis, in my opinion. Um, that would be fine with me. If he's still dealing with an illness, no. I'm not purchasing him. I'm not holding him. I am absolutely selling him. Um, get him off of my team as quickly as possible. Uh, Jamal Williams... An unknown for me, we're waiting on the news for DeAndre Swift, whether he's playing or not playing, if his projection stays at 14 points. Um, that's that's really what it's going to come down to. I think Detroit is going to produce this week. I, I don't think they're actually going to lose this game. I th I'm kind of thinking they're going to win. Um, might be a close win, but I think they win. Tyreek Hill. I want to hold him. But 19 projection, 19 point projection is a, it's just so freaking high. Uh, even against the New York Jets. And I get it, New York Jets, not good. Tyreek Hill, superstar. Teddy Bridgewater, able to throw a deep ball and has no qualms with doing so. As we saw against Cincinnati. I like Tyreek Hill. I'm just nervous that if he doesn't end up being the the target number one this week, he comes in at 14 points and we lose a lot of money. That's my challenge with it. That's really the problem. I've got to see that projection come down a little bit. Even if it's 18 points, I'd be more comfortable with 18 than it would be 19. So those are my wait until Sunday to see. Um, but who I've already sold and am planning to sell, Antonio Gibson, uh, Brian Robinson, looks like he may come back this week. Uh, even if he doesn't, I don't know that I trust Antonio Gibson. They've basically taken the ball away from him already. So I'm not going to hold on to Antonio Gibson. I'm not holding on to Curtis Samuel. I've already sold him. Uh, 13 points is just too high, and he's dealing with an illness, which tells me he could get a two-point game because he's just not running the way he's used to and not getting the targets like he has been. Uh, and then Khalil Herbert, I don't know what this offense is trying to do. Um, the projection was like 13 points or something like that. He still failed to do it. Uh, his projections 11.46. I don't even know if he can get that. His team can't get down the field. His team decided in a game they were losing to only pass the ball 11 times. You're never going to win that way. You may think you're going to win. You may have a single win doing that, but... Everybody else is attempting 30, 40 pass attempts a game. They attempted only 11 passes. They just ran the ball and Khalil Herbert didn't hit projection. It was a team that should have given up the run. And Khalil Herbert runs better than he did. But when you only pass attempt 11 times, you cripple your running game. Because now they stack the box with 8 players and you're going nowhere. That's what it is. That's pure and simple what's going on. So I don't trust Khalil Herbert because of his coaches, because of his offense. It might be a good offense next year when they actually draft some offensive players pieces but just not this year and with that sad note
that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that notification bell so that you make sure that you see what we choose on Sunday morning. Thank you, and have a good night.